Hello yet again and welcome back to Composing with Sam. This is episode five. And in this episode, we're going to kind of do a throwback to seven or eight years ago. And for those of you that don't know, for from 2014 to 2020, I had a company called Civil FX and we provided 3D visualization services for mostly transportation and other infrastructure projects. I sold that in 2020 to Parametrics. But during those six years, we would do all sorts of renders for clients on transportation projects. And that included Las Vegas monorail. And they wanted to show what it would look like if we did this monorail kind of, I think it was an extension from the airport to Mandalay Bay or the Luxor. And so I modeled all of this in SketchUp, rendered it out in Lumion and did some compositing layering in something like GIMP or um, Photoshop possibly. And so this is kind of the different iterations that we went through. You can see some of them, they wanted uh, different peer configurations or they wanted it in front of the sign or behind the sign or behind the, the wall. And so this took dozens of hours of um, back and forth with the client, of modeling, of compositing, of working in Lumion to get this final result. And so what we want to do today is I want to jump into Beyond Typicals and see if we can recreate something similar in just a fraction of the time. And this is not going to be exactly the same as what we have. There are, are different steps that I would have taken. Um, for example, I still have these SketchUp files for these peers. I could go grab those and bring them in. Um, but I want to stay kind of within the spirit of Beyond Typicals and just use the sections that we already have. And then also the shadow matching isn't going to be perfect because if it were for a client, I would take an additional step of kind of trying to match where, what the shadows would be. Um, in something like Photoshop or GIMP. Um, but even within those limitations, I think we can do a pretty good job of creating something that a client would be happy with uh, in just a few minutes. So it's gonna be crazy to go from maybe a dozen hours to a dozen minutes. And that's the, the sort of efficiencies that you get with Beyond Typicals. So we brought our image here into Beyond Typicals and turned off the total width label and, and I always set it to 4K because I know what the final render is going to be, and that's going to change kind of the aspect ratio or the, um, the resolution of the image. All right, so we're going to use the sections that are built in, and uh, this one's called raised rail. It's one of the sections. One of the, one of the limitations that we're going to be dealing with in this is when you stretch a section out, let's say we want to push this out to a 500 feet for better camera matching, it's going to just stretch those columns with it. They're not dynamic at this point within Beyond Typicals. And so we were aware of that limitation and we're going to be dealing with that. And if, and if you squished it down to 50 length, 50 feet long, it would squish those piers. Uh, for those working in metric, we have that option as well, but we're working in feet for this project. All right, so you can see here, we extended the length out and it's just, um, Again, one of the limitations that the peers are stretched out, but that's still not that dissimilar to what we're seeing in the renders that I did for Las Vegas Monorail uh, a long time ago. We want to turn off this auto label. It's not going to be helping us out much. And then we just need to do a little bit of camera matching. And uh, before we do that, I just want to go, I'm going to go and turn off these layers below the peers so that they don't conflict with the image. And by to do that, you just select each one and make them all transparent, which uh, goes by pretty quickly. All right, so now with that, we can kind of look what we're dealing with, with the original render, and we're gonna do some sort of camera matching to get something similar. All right, so that's camera matched, at least for now. Uh, hopefully that's good enough. And we can do adjustments later when we get the, the rail on there. All right, so this, this step is just kind of up to you. But what I did here, what I'm doing here is I'm going to grab a tree. And I just want to kind of put it up out of frame, casting a shadow on. Because we can see these trees. And we just want to say, hey, look, there are trees casting shadows that may be hitting some of these piers. All right, so now we can bring in our monorail model, which again, 
it's in SketchUp and then you can export from SketchUp as an OBJ. We have more information on how to do this if you go to beyondcat.com slash tutorials. And so if you go to assets and select import, then you can find that file. FBX is the default, but we want to find the OBJ, which is right here. And you can just kind of use the default settings in most cases. If it doesn't work, you can go and kind of tweak those. Then click finish import. It's going to take a moment or two. And then you'll see that icon. It, it auto generated kind of an icon of, of what, it, what it's looking like. You can drag and drop it like this. And you see that green highlight of the section. That means that it's going to be attached to that section and then get it placed where you want it to be. When you import stuff within Beyond Typicals, it's gonna kind of combine all of the similar textures together, and then each of those textures, you can edit the color, you can edit the, you can, you can replace it with one of the imported Beyond Typicals textures. Uh, this one, we just wanna make sure that it's black again, because that's, that's what we're seeing in the image in our render. And you can also assign, uh, it should auto detect if there are any glass textures, but you can also um, change any, any of those to glass or plastic or concrete or whatever it is that you want from the existing texture library within Beyond Typicals. You can see here there's this green thing in the back. We're just kind of turning that black so it's not as distracting. All right, so now that we're in here, we just need to um, figure out how our compositing is and you can see here it looks too low so we just need to zoom in a little bit and get a better angle kind of perspective it's kind of a hero shot that we're looking for um, in addition to matching the photo that we already have out there and so this is a little bit closer but we do might need to make a few more adjustments All right, now it's time to make some test renders. And this is, it's gonna take a few minutes on the first one. But after that, you'll see um, our concrete's a little bit darker than what you see in the photo. But other than that, this is looking very amazing, especially for the fact that, that this has been like uh, 10 minutes of work to get this far. All right, after a few adjustments um, of both the texturing and the cameras, this is how the final render is turning out and uh, and again going from dozens of hours to less than a dozen minutes I think is pretty amazing as far as efficiency goes <clears throat> now we can go here to um, now that we've done this where we have the static render using the existing SketchUp model that I already had I also want to show how you can use a dynamic asset especially the dynamic rail to make this into an animated video and the dynamic rail is very customizable it's not customizable enough to make it a monorail but you can change things like color and length and so on to um, to get it closer to the rail that you that you might be working with especially if you want it to be animated and so once you make that then you want to assign it to the raised rail so that it's going to show up there and then we can uh, make sure that it's showing up there it is and it's just um, just the front part, but we'll make a few adjustments to the number of trains, the passengers inside the colors, and um, I'll kind of zoom through this part, but this is, uh, this is how the final result is. And then we render it out and this is the final video. So about 15 minutes to do the image renders with the SketchUp model of Monorail and to do this video uh, animated render with the dynamic train. So pretty cool. If you have any questions about this, I know I kind of run through these, but we can walk, we can work with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you're work, you understand how to do it for your own photo compositing project within Beyond Typicals. Just go to beyondcad.com and um, select the contact us button and make sure to fill out that form and we will get back to you and schedule a time to work with you. My name is Sam Lytle and I will talk to you in the next one.